Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another live session with FASA. I'm Romilly Thresher, and joining me today, I've got two guests, Duncan Diesel and Jeremy Danheiser. Duncan Diesel started at Miniman Press. He is as a field rep and is now an area manager and has been with the Minuteman Press team for 13 years supporting franchisees. Comes from printers. Duncan's grandmother ran the printing company at the Chamber of Mines for 30 years. His father was also in printing his entire life. Two of Duncan's brothers is also in printing. Duncan has gone from being a press operator, a designer, an estimator, to managing print shops. And uh, he left school and went into the print business and has been in the print business for 27 years. Jeremy Danheiser is a Miniman Press franchisee and has also been around his print all of his life. His family owned a print shop and various newspapers in Springs, including the first African newspaper called The African Reporter, as well as the Springs and Brackpan Advertiser, which was the only newspaper with two front pages, one in English and one in Afrikaans, on the reverse side. Jeremy started his actual print career in Cape Town and as an estimator and then moved to Johannesburg to join the advertising world at the advertising agency called Bernstein, Lockstein, Goldstein and Klein and worked as a print production manager in a few other agencies before he became the proud owner of a Minuteman Press in Hyde Park. So good morning to you guys. Good morning, Duncan. Good morning, Jeremy. Morning, Romany. Morning, morning, Romany. How is it going on the other side of the world in Johannesburg? Pretty cool. It's 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 a little bit chilly, but uh, uh, I think that's that's uh, that's what win that's winter for you. That is that pretty is. cool. It is okay. So if you're out there, please join us. Say hello. Come and ask your questions. And today we're going to be discussing Minuteman Press and also the print business, but more. They have a initiative called the Bounce Back Africa. So I'm just going to hit off with Duncan, and I'm going to ask you, Duncan, Bounce Back South Africa. Who started the Bounce Back Initiative? What is the purpose of bounce of the Bounce Back movement? Okay, so um, one of our owners in Nashville started it um, right at the beginning of lockdown. There, he was sitting around thinking of ideas about. Um, what he could do to help the local community and how he could um, help people get out of the, the situation, the COVID-19 situation, how we could bounce back out of it. So he thought of bounce back. So what bounce back is, it's, it's two parts. You've got two free services to help all the local communities to bounce back from, like I said, COVID-19. So the one part of it is we give a free listing to all businesses in the local community on their local bounce back site. And then also we give um, free COVID-19 awareness posters to the, the respective businesses so that they can um, inform customers coming in. And what would you say is the benefit to all businesses who register with the Bounce Back South Africa? Um, you know, the, the benefit is that uh, business needs to be restarted, kickstarted, and certainly in the local areas. Uh, this is a place for you to support your local restaurant, the one in your area. Uh, this is to support those businesses that are in and around you. So um, it's, a, it's a place where you can go, certainly if you're in an area like, for instance, Dunkeld, and go and see what businesses are registered there um, and help them out. They're the ones that have been... Uh, that, that, that need the support in your area. So it's, it's, about, it's about the local support. It's about the local support for the guys in your area. And what does it cost to register with Bounce Back South Africa? Well, you know what they say, nothing in life is free. Well, Bounce Back is. Um, there is no cost to list your, to list your business on the site. Uh, there is no cost for that, uh, that COVID poster. Um, and... Uh, the COVID post is one of the things you're going to need anyway as, as a prerequisite. So it's, it's, it's free. I know it sounds strange, but really it's free. And um, well, how's it been received so far? What has the participation been like? Um, participation's been pretty good. Um, we've got close on one and a half thousand um, businesses across the country registered with our various locations. Um, so it's, it's been received very well and uh, a lot of people have given positive feedback and um, it's, go it's growing every day, basically. 
That sounds good. And if people want to join the Bounce Back, uh, where would, what is the address? Where would they find that? They would just go to www.bouncebacksouthafrica.com and then they could select the, the closest location to them because there's locations pretty much across the whole country. And the cool thing is on the site, when they register themselves, they can put their, their logos, they put all the info themselves, and then they can also list specials that they are having for um, post-COVID-19. post, post um, COVID So they can list specials so that, and they can update them if they want uh, through the store. So it's, it's pretty, it's going pretty well. Okay, so it's pretty much like a directory where people can go and find local businesses to go and support and help within their communities. Very local. Okay, so that's good. So if you're out there, go and uh, head over to the Bounce Back website, go and see which businesses are opening and which businesses are operating. Because sometimes with the COVID-19, one doesn't really know who is open and who is not. So that would be a good point, starting point if you're looking for a service or a product or, um, yes, whatever it is you're looking for. So good morning, Sean. Thank you. Welcome for joining us again. Same to Eve. Hi over there. And uh, let's go to over to a franchise or franchisee relationship, which is very important to have a successful franchise business. And um, that is that is that is you, um, Jeremy. You're going to be letting us know. <laughs> About. I have, uh, uh, Romani, just one thing I want to say about just about the bounce back is they don't just have to register in one spot. One must okay. bear in mind that uh, Joburg is, although it's big, is quite small. So if you you know, it there is value in registering, you know, in in Dunkeld, in Santon, in uh, in um, the Parkview area. So don't just register your businesses with one with one site. It's definitely definitely an advantage to to get your word spread out. It's it's all about the listing. So definitely worth it. Um, to the, the, and it's the, all about the marketing as well, the marketing of a business. You know, that's what people absolutely. realize is visibility is key in business. Uh, you know, when, when I deal with businesses every day, I'm in the social media space, I'm in the online world, and it still boggles the mind that, you know, I think I started way back in 2006 when it's just before it started becoming a hit, and it still boggles the mind as to how many businesses do not factor in how important it is to have that online visibility, to be present and to show that you are still alive and going. So please make a point of it. Go and register and make yourself visible where you can. So yes, coming back to the franchisee franchisor relationship, as a franchise okay. Chris, what has been um, in the involvement of your franchisor during this time? Well, yeah, obviously now I'm speaking from the franchi franchisee sitting next to the franchisor here. Um, you know, and you know, what is so important in times like this is your head office. If you do not have head office involvement in a time when, of crisis, like we're experiencing now, um, it's it's a battle. It's a battle to do it on your own. That's why you join a franchise. Um, what makes it so successful is the involvement of head office. And one must bear in mind, South African head office, the, 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 the Minuteman Press franchise, the franchise is still held in America, the master franchise. It isn't, it isn't necessarily local. Um, which would make people think that there's a divorce from you know, the, over the distance. On the contrary, what, what we found um, is that the involvement has been unbelievable. The first thing is, and from day one, uh, I know it's going to sound like you know, sort of buttering up Duncan, but you know, and and head office. But the reality is, when one of the main things of the franchise in general is your franchise fees, and from day one, the first communication that came out was that we would be getting payment holidays from the franchise or on the royalties. Now, that takes a huge stress off your franchise, of your franchisee, sorry, when, when they've got to think that that's one thing that, is, then that they don't have to worry about. So that was one of the very first emails, one of the very first communications of multitude of communications. We've had constant communication, constant email, constant contact from the international side and the local side which, you know, we, we've got the guys sitting here working with us. We were doing Zoom meetings with the franchisee local, the franchise or locally to discuss local issues because obviously, you know, worldwide COVID is COVID, but, you know, funding is different in different countries. So, um, you know, we were dealing with that locally 
through the communication with 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 Duncan and 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 Frick and and the other guys and Frick Junior in the in the local office. But then the constant, constant, constant communication from overseas. We were getting. It's about motivation. You know, if your franchisee, your franchise or can't motivate you as a franchisee, you're in trouble. And we were getting, we still are getting regular communications about hang in there, guys. We're there for you. We're there to support you. These are the things you can do. And then you get the thing like the bounce back. You know, where, where suddenly the, the you know, bounce back comes along and they say, guys, we set this up. This is the formula. You don't have to think about it. Just do it. And it's those things that account as a franchisee to know that somebody's got your back. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's those type of things that we've seen. And it's, it's ongoing graphics. We didn't have to think about it. They were creating graphics for us that we could just send out an, on, on, on email blasts to our customers, you know, to say, we, we're doing this initiative. Guys, hang in there. Um, and, so, and then also things like rent negotiation. I mean, we, you'll see on the amount of people that say, you know, what is the landlord doing? Can, can somebody help us? It helps when you, have, when you have somebody got, you know, that's got your back, that is, is backing you up. So communication, motivation, and, and, and great initiatives. So I know I'm sounding a little bit sort of like, like yeah, the, the, you know, I'm sounding it's too good to be true, but that's what's been happening. So, yeah. Both locally and internationally. Which been you know, I've heard from a few other franchise companies that um, the amount of support that they've been receiving from their franchisors, and that is good because when I look at small businesses out there and I can hear how stressed out they feel, um, just knowing that someone's there and rooting for you or someone, you know, just it's like even having that engaging conversation with your family or whatever the case may be uh, to take you through this moment. And when you've got business challenges, uh, not everybody understands those challenges. So coming, you know, when you've got the support from someone and a group of people, it does make you feel like, you know what, we can do this. And it's almost like a brainstorm. So, I mean, for you, Duncan, what has that experience been for you in terms of uh, supporting your friend, the franchisors out there, uh, the franchisees out there? You know, it's, it comes from within. So we we feel like, I feel part of the, every business that I deal with. I take it very personally. I don't just think that they're the franchisees. I see it as part of us. So everything I can do, I try and do as good as I can, as well as I can, because it's very important to keep the guys motivated. Guys like Jeremy, all our owners out there, they, they were struggling. We had a lot of difficult communications in our Zoom calls because people wondering what's going to happen. And I mean, we couldn't tell them what was going to happen because no one, still no one knows what's going to happen. But, you know, we could just communicate and give them the best info we have. And just like Jeremy said, we brainstorm. We, I mean, we had um, some Zoom meetings where we had 35, 40 of our stores on one call and everyone just gives different ideas, different things to do. And you just feel a lot more comfortable. From day one, I was getting WhatsApps after the Zoom meeting saying, thanks so much for that because, you know, we feel a bit better. We, we understand now. And you've got – every owner's got their different strength. So, you know, some will have great marketing ideas. Others will have good PR, um, uh, HR ideas. So, you know, it was just good to bounce everything off one another. And um, Jerry, I'm going to ask you another question in terms of franchisees. You know, a lot of people want to go and buy a franchise business and they want to go out there and, and, and yeah, really join a franchise. What, what, what would you say from a franchisee's perspective, what to look for when, when buying a franchise business? Okay, so the first thing you're going to look for is the franchise support. Um, this isn't a buy and leave, right? You, you, need, you need to know that, that they've got your back in more ways than one. Because, you know, building a franchise, you can go and open your own store, but if you don't have the support and the systems in place, uh, it, it, there's no point. Um, and, you know, what does, the franchise, what does the franchise offer you that you can't get locally, that you can't get opening a store by yourself? And, you know, the things like, uh, you know, we have with Minuteman Press, for instance, we have a royalty cap. So, you know, it, it, it pays us to do as much business as we can because the royalty stops at a certain level and anything above that you know, is, for our own, is for our own value. It's not a case of the more you make, the more they make. 
Um, you know, that to me tells me that the franchise, you know, the French, the head office is interested in you doing better. Mm. Um, because the more I put in, the more I'm going to get out. We have no marketing fee. Okay. It's funny. Um, when you walk into the Minuteman uh, training center, and we all go to the same place. So this is the other thing, training, 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 training. See what training they're offering you. Every Minuteman press goes to America for training. We go to the same place. We all get the identical, the identical training. Um, we get to stay, you know, even the guys from America, you know, I was with guys in New York. We were training in Huntington, which is New York. We were all staying together. Why? It's building a family. And, and uh, uh, when you walk into the, into the training room, right above the door, there's a big sign that says, if you don't mark it, you won't make it. Okay? And that's drilled into our head. So the backup, you know, look to see what the franchise is going to offer you. Do they have the systems? Do they have a track record? Um, you know, that's, that's important. And then talk to the other franchisors, uh, franchisees. Go and, go, and, go and chat to the other guys and see what do they say about the franchise. You know, go, go and see what they, how, how do they support each other? You know, because things like when, when you've got a franchise, that you rely, if, you, if you're not able to complete a job, you rely on somebody else to do it for you or to help you. It's about help. Um, you know, we don't buy anything through our head office. Uh, now, we say, well, isn't that the value of a franchise? You know, they have a head office. No. What, 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 what happens with us, they negotiate for us as a group. We get to choose if we want to buy through that group or not. It would be silly not to, but we don't have to buy from them. What does that say to me as a franchisee? It tells me there is no funny things going on there. In other words, what I pay for is what I get. I don't have to worry about if I'm buying, if I've got to buy paper through head office, is there some sort of, you know, kickback involved? We don't have that. So look to see what the franchise is offering you in terms of their systems, their deals, the support. Uh, and their communication, um, and and are they with the times? You know, I, I, we, we're hugely fortunate with with Miniman Press being an international company. There are over nine hundred franchises. Uh, yeah, I think Col uh, Duncan will correct me. There's nine hundred franchises. Five hundred thousand. Yeah. So you know, we're getting the value of everybody internationally. We're getting the value of them. You know, we, we have head office in America flying to Drupa, going to the Drupa show to go and see what is the latest, greatest. And then they're not going to dictate to us. They don't say, you must use. They'll say, guys, we recommend this or we've done that. Don't do that. So it's, it's that support um, that you must look at in any franchise, not just us, any franchise. Look to see what you are being offered. Don't be very quick to be fooled by the, oh, this is all beautiful bells and whistles. Okay, take away the bells and whistles, open the box and see what the present is inside. That's the, uh, that's where it comes from, you know, and, um, and can you see yourself as a family? That's what makes us so successful. It's all about family. Yeah, you, you heard us beforehand, Duncan and I, you know, kind of going at each other. It's that, it's, it's that we can do that. You know, we, 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 we're a family. Minuteman Press is a family. Um, and we rely on each other to do that, and that's how it works. That's what makes a successful franchise. And it kind of answer that question. Um, and I was just thinking that one must do your due diligence. So take your time, oh, do your work, do your research. I mean, everything is a risk. Nothing in life is guaranteed, but you can minimize your risk by doing your research, doing your due diligence, and doing your homework. You know. So yes, sometimes you lose, but other times you gain, gain as well. So thank you, Gail, for joining us. Gail Madrix, she says, as a fellow owner, 100% true what Jeremy is saying. We've had an incredible support from the US and from the local office as well as support from our fellow owners sharing information. So thank you for sharing that with us, Gail. Thank you. Well, let's get over to um, talking about print in general. So for businesses that have not reopened yet, should they be preparing to reopen? What is your thoughts on that? You want to start, Duncan? No, Jeremy, you can. You're doing such a good job. You may as well carry on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know, the, the, first, the first thing is that should businesses open if they can? Absolutely. I mean, that's not even a, that's not even a, that's a given. But there is so much you're going to have to do up front. Okay. So in terms of, and, and, you know, I was thinking about this, do, you know, do we talk about 
businesses that are, haven't opened yet and that are starting to open or business that are already open. You know, it's the same thing. Both need to do exactly the same thing. So the first thing is you've got to realize there are certain legal things you have to do. There are certain r records that you're going to have to keep by law. And now you can download them. They're all over the internet. But you have to have signing records. You're going to be doing things like taking people's temperature. Um, you're going to have to you know, have a document in place that if one of the health inspectors, one of those thousand health inspectors that, the, that they have, uh, have trained walks into your store, you're going to be able to show to them and say, this is my COVID, my COVID document. So really, really important. Um, get those documents in place and get people signed and get your staff to just you know, do it properly. Okay, it's 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 to your value because if these guys walk in and you don't have it and they shut you down, it's not worth it. So mm. get your get your records in place. Okay, not difficult to do, but you need to do that, and you need to, and and not just with your customers, with your staff as well. There's certain things you need to have right with your staff. Okay, in terms of the fact that they have to wear masks. This isn't a given. I mean, this isn't an option. This isn't. It looks pretty. You have to do it. So. So the first thing is get those get those things uh, the, the the legal requirements in place. Secondly, the information posters, COVID posters. You need to have this information everywhere. Okay, uh, I, I know it's kind of like a bit of a self promotion thing, but pretty much everything I'm going to tell you, although is necessary, we do it. So if anybody wants to know, we do them all. Okay, so um, the first thing is sorry, a shameless plug. Um, you are going to need those information posters. It's one of the prerequisites. Um, and then if you do bounce back, you'll get one of those free. So yeah, do you know, um, the COVID posters, social distancing signs. It's really, really important that you've got that space in place when people are coming in. We don't know yet with restaurants exactly how it's going to take place, but you're going to need it. Okay. Um, hair salons, things like that. You're going to need the social distancing schools, um, that, that have gone back are socially distancing. They, you know, they're having to to do this. So your social distancing uh, posters, your, your distancing floor stickers, put it on the floor so people can see it, okay? And it's, it's, it's important, okay? It's important both for actual health and for, uh, you know, and for, for the legal requirements, okay? You need to put things like banners that say, we're open, okay? People are, are so uncertain who is open, who's not Ooh. open. You need to advertise it. Guys, we're back in business. So put those banners out there. Put those signs out there. You need to say to people, we're here. Come back. Okay. Um, sanitizer. It's a given. All right. So you're going to need sanitizer. You're going to need sanitizer dispensing stations. You're going to need that. If people walk in, they sanitize. They walk out, they sanitize. Your businesses have to have those sanitizer in place. Don't, don't skimp on it. You need it. All right. So... Um, and it's got to be visible. Masks. You're going to need masks. Don't. It's it's not an option. The debate about mask versus face shields. There's no definitive, but you need some sort of some sort of face shield, some sort of mask. Um, from I businesses. Ask about that because um, I've yeah. noticed that in some shore. I wasn't sure if one has to wear both or not. I prefer the face shield. I mean, to me, it feels better. Um, I can breathe and operate more, but uh, yeah, I've noticed people using both, and uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, there, there's unfortunately there, there, there's no um, government gazette that talks about the face shields. It actually only talks. The, it's gazetted. You need to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. I, I think yeah, you know, a face shield is certainly far more comfortable because you don't you're not having to breathe through a material all the time. So it's definitely far more comfortable. But you know, some places are doubling up. Certainly, med uh, medical places are doubling up. But I can't tell you if, uh, that. I'm afraid. Uh, you know, is some people do it, some people don't. But whatever it is, do something. Okay. Yeah. You can easier to say sorry afterwards, but but definitely do something. Um, for companies, yeah. brand your masks. Okay. You know, make them look good. Right. Yeah. And and for those companies that are you know want to, to to want a great giveaway, give away branded masks. Okay, you know, we're talking about the advertising and the constant marketing and the constant branding. If you're giving away brand of masks, ones they can put in their car in case they forget theirs at home, brand your masks. Okay, there are so many out there that you can do. Um, you're going you to need them things. Away because sometimes, I mean, I've almost walked out, ran out the door and go, oh my goodness, and I've had to, I'm, <laughs> I'm driven down the road and I've had to drive back to the house. Oh, shit. Exactly. So, <laughs> 
brand a mask, let them put it in their car. It's a great place to do it. Okay, hand sanitizers for people to put in their car. Yeah. You know, people are now getting very, very nervous about it. So brand hand sanitizers, yeah. put it in the car, and and people have this all over the place. Okay, it's about having your brand in front of everybody all the time. Your businesses are going to need think, things like Perspex dividers. Sorry. No, I think you've hit the, the one of the most important topics of the whole thing. What should people be doing when they get back now? And what they should be doing is marketing their business more than they ever have before. Mm. Um, I because think a, lot, a lot of people think times are tough. They cut their marketing budget. But um, mm. marketing in these times is actually the most important time to do it so that you can get yourself in front of people, whether it's um, social media, whether it's online, whether it's print advertising. Advertising should go up right now. I know Jeremy was telling me a story about Kellogg's. I can't remember the exact story. Jeremy, what was that? Uh, it was a come. Yeah, we all know Kellogg's cereals. Most of us have never heard of post cereals. In the 1920s, when the Great Depression hit, Post did what normal companies do. They backed off their branding. They backed off their, their advertising. Kellogg's did the opposite. They upped their, 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 their advertising. They said, you know, kind of, we've got to do it. If we don't market, we won't make it. Now, who's still around? You know, Kellogg's. Everyone knows Kellogg's is a cereal. You mm. know, so Duncan's exactly right. It's marketing, marketing, marketing. Oh, one other important thing, just before we finish marketing, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. Right now, you have to watch that cash flow. No excessive spending. And at the same time, you have to be empathetic um, because people are, you know, are out there don't have money. So trying to collect current debt because you have to collect it, but you've also got to be empathetic about it. You've got to realize that everyone's in this boat. But um, contacting your customers, phone your customers, send your customers emails. Guys, are you still there? How are you doing? Um, we're here for you being in contact and in touch with your customers. Uh, it's, it's, it's the branding, but it's the, it's the human side of branding. Um, because some of them might not be opening. Yeah, showing that you care, you care. And um, yeah, I just want to ask you also, why is print still relative, relevant in these digital times? I mean, with okay, I was, people are online and now we're moving into the virtual world. Why is it relevant? Um, I'm actually glad you asked that. I'll, I'll just give one little point that I, I feel is critically important. Everybody knows Amazon. Amazon are e-commerce through and through. They are 100% online. The past two years, they've released their own printed catalogs for Christmas because they've, they realized that the print article is still super relevant and adds value to your online um, to your online advertising and stuff. So you've got to have both. Both are still relevant. I don't know, Jeremy. Do you agree? What do you? Totally. Because if we think like a Facebook post, okay, you post it and then it's gone. You can miss it. Uh, print is tangible. It's it's in your face. It's right there. You can hold it. You can hold a menu. All right. Um, once that. Tweet is gone, it's gone. The Facebook post. So there's a much longer engagement with a physical item than, than, with, 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 the, than with digital. So um, you, you also you think like your creative ability, um, the, the things you can do on paper with paper and board, you cannot get that online. You can join the two together. That's really important is to realize creating things like QR codes and augmented reality uh, utilizing physical print brings you into the digital world. It's key into the digital world. And it's really important to actually do the two together. But you cannot, cannot lose print. I mean, the, right now, everyone's got digital fatigue. How many people are just are, are tired of looking at a screen? Um, it hurts. It's, 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 it gets tiring. And things like, you know, people, you know, sorry. Mm, I was thinking the same. Uh, now that I think about it, when I go out, I seem to spot the advertised vans a little bit more and I spot the other people that are advertising because it's almost like it stands out whereas on the internet everything's very noisy there's just so much information that you know you really have to make yourself stand out to 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 be heard um so you 
Thanks. Gosh, we're running out of time here. Wendy Krauss is saying, as a fellow owner, the innovative ideas that we were supported with from our franchisors kept us inspired. The encouragement was what helped us keep a positive attitude. Thank you for sharing this. And so, yes, it is vitally important to support and to share because, you know what, we are humans. You know, we are humans doing business. Uh, the, I think the world has gone where, you know, all the pretend is gone. You know, there was a world where, you know, we had to hide all our things. I think no longer that is relevant. Um, in close, any final thoughts you'd like to share? Well, yeah, in, in, in times like this, market, 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 okay? You, you need, we need to kickstart business. We really need businesses to get back on track and as quickly as possible. And, you know, it, people, need to, people need to be in touch with their customers uh, and, uh, and, and that's it. Chat to your customers uh, and be in touch with them. Um, and one last thing about printing, why printing is relevant. Just remember, printing never goes flat. Your iPad will, your iPhone will, but your book will never, ever run out of batteries. <laughs> True story. It could get lost. <laughs> <laughs> And anything last from you, Duncan, before we close? No, I'm, I'm great. And I just want to thank you for the opportunity to have this little chat because I think it's, it's important to get these things out there because, as you said, Bounce Back is there to support the local communities. That's the most important thing. It was an initiative created to help Bounce Back after COVID-19. So it's, it's good to get this out there. Thanks for that, Romani. All right, and thank you, and thank Absolutely. you for joining me today. And to everybody else out there, thank you for joining us. Thank you for watching us. Uh, if you want to know more about Miniman Press, I will be posting the link in the comment box below to this uh, interview. And just to once again remind you that FASA is a non-profit organization that protects, lobbies, promotes, and develops ethical franchising across all sectors in South Africa with specific focus on transformation. FASA offers membership to both existing franchisors and franchisees who supports and runs ethical businesses. If you would like to know more about FASA, you can visit them at www.fasa.co.za. Thank you everyone for joining and have a super week going forward. Thanks a lot. Bye.